Welcome to the lead on Tick Tap, where we begin with the politics lead and the most consequential decision Democrats are going to make during the Trump presidency, as House Democrats are right now preparing for a conversation they're going to have at the end of this hour to discuss whether or not the House of Representatives will seek to impeach President Trump. Many Democrats on the record are saying they believe special counsel Robert Mueller laid out a compelling case that President Trump indeed obstructed justice, a matter that Mueller seemed to kick to Congress. Now on that other matter, conspiracy with Russia to interfere in the 2016 election, Mueller of course said his investigation did not find sufficient evidence of that, but President Trump's attorney Rudy Giuliani is telling me, quote, there's nothing wrong with taking information from Russians, it depends on where it came from. The latest in an evolution or devolution in Trump team claims regarding interactions with the Russians. It started with what we were told in November 2016. You might recall Hope Hicks telling the public, quote, it never happened. There was no communication between the campaign and any foreign entity during the campaign. Then there was President Trump in February 2017. I have nothing to do with Russia. To the best of my knowledge, no person that I deal with does. No person. In July 2017, we of course learned about that infamous Trump Tower meeting back in June 2016. Now initially, Donald Trump Jr., in a misleading statement drafted, at least in part by his father, publicly claimed that in the meeting, quote, we primarily discussed a program about the adoption of Russian children, unquote. We soon learned, of course, that the meeting was set up with the express primary purpose of getting dirt on Hillary Clinton from a Russian government lawyer. We now know, according to Mueller, while there is not sufficient evidence to prove any criminal conspiracy, the Russians did indeed work to elect Donald Trump. They spread information, often false, on social media to help Trump, reaching, according to Mueller, tens of millions of Americans. They illegally obtained Democrats' emails and publicly released them. And the special counsel noted that the Trump campaign expected it would benefit electorally from the Russians' help. Not a crime, according to Mueller, but not ethical, at least according to Republican Senator Mitt Romney, who said in a statement that he was, quote, appalled that people on the Trump campaign welcomed that help from Russia. And that leads us to this latest positioning by Team Trump on relations with Russians bearing gifts. Any candidate in the whole world in America would take information Negative from a theory. foreign source? From a hostile foreign source? Who says it's even illegal? There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with taking information from Russians. There's nothing it wrong with taking depends information. Depends on where it came from. From November 2016 until now, a journey from we never even communicated with Russians to there's nothing wrong with accepting help from the Russians. Separate and apart from impeachment, a question for Democrats and Republicans on Capitol Hill, what does this latest declaration mean for American elections now. What signal is the Trump team now sending to Russia, and China, Iran, any other country that might want to inf interfere in the 2020 election? Today, President Trump is dismissing talk of impeachment and fuming behind the scenes. CNN's Caitlin Collins kicks off our coverage. President Trump was all smiles in front of the cameras during the Easter egg roll today. This is a beautiful day. But behind the scenes, sources say he's fuming over the release of the special counsel's report and the portrait it paints of a dishonest president whose staff refused to carry out his most extreme demands. Are you worried that your staff is ignoring your orders as the Mueller report portrays? Nobody disobeys my orders. But the Mueller report showed they did including the White House counsel who refused to fire the special counsel, the attorney general who wouldn't unrecuse himself, the former campaign manager who ignored his command to tell the attorney general to limit the investigation, and the staff secretary who would engage the loyalty of DOJ officials. Sources now say the president is seeking assurances from his current staff that they're following his orders. That, as the president and his business are suing the House Oversight Chairman Elijah Cummings today in an attempt to block House Democrats from getting his financial records. The lawsuit argues Cummings has no legitimate legislative reason to subpoena an accounting company tied to Trump. And the president's outside attorney, Jay Sekulow, told CNN, we will not allow congressional presidential harassment to go unanswered. Good afternoon. Democrats say they aren't buying it. He's a lot of bluster, and in the end, do those suits go anywhere? 
No, he ends up withdrawing, he ends up settling because there's nothing to them. But they're wrestling with another dicey problem, whether the president's behavior justifies impeachment. While some, including House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, have tried to throw cold water on the idea, others aren't ready to walk away yet. Even if we did not win, possibly, uh, if there were not impeachment, uh, I think history would smile upon us for standing up for the Constitution. Trump tweeting today that only high crimes and misdemeanors can lead to impeachment, but later telling reporters he's not worried about it. Are you worried about impeachment, Mr. President? And Caitlin Collins is here with us. Caitlin, the president just tweeted, isn't it amazing that the people who were closest to me by far and knew the campaign better than anyone were never even called to testify before Mueller? The reason is that the 18 angry Democrats knew that they would all say no collusion and only very good things. But if you read the Mueller report, Caitlin, on page 117, it says that Donald Trump Jr. declined to be interviewed by the special counsel. So I don't understand this claim by the president. Well, and then you have to look at the people that they did interview. The first campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski, another campaign manager, Paul Manafort, the deputy campaign manager, Rick Gates, Steve Bannon, and even the president's son-in-law and senior, now senior advisor, Jared Kushner, twice. So the idea that they didn't speak to anyone who was high ranking on the campaign or very familiar with the campaign is just simply not true because they actually had extensive interviews with a lot of these people that worked on the campaign. So who is he talking about, Kelly and Conway? There are a few people who weren't interviewed, but you've got to think about everyone. There was an extensive amount of interviews that this is based off of. So if the president is trying to frame it that the people who simply were interviewed are people who don't like him, maybe Don McGahn because they had a very troubled relationship when, and complicated when Don McGahn was in the White House, just simply is not the case. Interesting. Jen Saki, let me ask you about Rudy Giuliani's uh, latest thing where he, he told me yesterday um, that, you know, it's not wrong to accept uh, information from the Russians, uh, assume, you know, depending on what it is. Um, that strikes me as a, a, a jarring comment. Uh, what was your reaction? Incredibly jarring. I mean, if you read the report, um, and, you know, I read the report. I'm not sure Donald Trump did, I would bet, um, from, from hearing some of the reporting. Um, the list of <laughs> um, kind of indiscretions here and events that happened on the campaign is is jarring too. And what Rudy Giuliani is, is saying, he's lowering the bar of what is acceptable or, or, you know, raising the bar of what's illegal, lowering the bar of what's acceptable. Now, you can argue, and some people have, that, you know, whether or not it was a campaign finance violation. But the fact is, I read it, a lot of Democratic friends, independent friends, Republican friends had a similar reaction, which is, if th this is not illegal, it should be. Um, and that's a question I would have, or if I were giving advice to Democrats, I would say, come up with a way to make that illegal. So his comment to me was obviously incredibly irresponsible, but it was suggesting that accepting information from a foreign adversary is acceptable, and it shouldn't be. But it's now the bar for the future, and that's incredibly dangerous. So uh, we should note, again, you know, he did not find sufficient evidence of criminal conspiracy. So to a degree, the president's been vindicated on that. But there is a difference between legal, illegal, and ethical, unethical. What, what was your response to what Rudy Giuliani said? No, I think it was shocking and I think instructive because it is now going to be the new norm, right? That it is now, I gather, I mean, as you just said earlier, uh, there was a reason the president himself and the campaign denied having these contacts because it was once viewed not so long ago in American politics as damaging, illegitimate, wrong to have these kinds of contacts, including secret contacts with an adversary, with agents of an adversarial power, including not just providing information, but providing stolen information and being encouraged to get more stolen information, etc. So the, what, what Rudy's comment to you shows is what will be, is why, what it means, what it means for me and what Trump's tweet that, well, they didn't interview everyone, means to me that the House has to go ahead with hearings. And they have to be serious about those hearings. If, if the mother didn't interview everyone, let the House. If Donald Jr. wants to talk so much, and if he was not, did not talk to special prosecutor, special counsel Mueller, I'm sure the House Judiciary Committee would be happy to have him talk. And if Rudy Giuliani, uh, and if the House leaves this alone now, what Rudy said to you will become the new norm.